Hello and welcome to Wake and Jake with myself and BBD. Today, we're going to reflect a little bit. We're towards the end of the season, and there's two ways you can go. And you're about to hear, you know, I'm sure in a couple weeks you might hear me accept my flowers on Ronald Acuna Jr. I said he might have a 40-40 season. I took Snell late in our Cy Young draft. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll enjoy that one. Along the way, there are a lot of bad takes. So let's reflect on those, and we'll hit you with a little uh, different football weekend format. So, uh, diving into it now, I'll, I'll aim kind of wide, and then I ask BBD to dig up a couple things for me. Just going through... Uh, some of the Wake and Jake social media. There's a couple easy ones here. Um, BBD, we did in January. So I'll drag you down with me at first and add some venom. Right. We did the top five rotations in baseball. Easy episode. Do you know who we each had for our number one? I probably said the New York Mets. We both had the Yankees. Oh, yes. Which, okay. You know, sometimes we get... Well, the whole time they didn't have the five. Sometimes we get some commentary on being New York people. That one seems to be about right on being wrong. Uh, Number two, you did have the Mets. um, Which, going by starting pitching ERA, which maybe isn't the best... Formula. The Mets are 12th. Yankees are 18th right now. With Garrett Cole probably about to win a Cy Young. Yankees stink, huh? (laughs) Yankees stink this year. It's crazy. We both had the Dodgers. The Dodgers. I had them two. You had them three. Mm -hmm. Dodgers ERA wise sit at 19th. Right behind the Yanks. At four, we both have Atlanta that's finished smack dab middle of the map. And then we both went sucker Houston at the end, who's the highest team on this list at 11. Yeah, I think we were, I feel like I recall us trying to just cover our our butts on that one. Man, basically 0 for 5. Uh, your current ERA... Team leaders are Toronto, Seattle. Okay. Felt like they were in the mix, but not in the mix. Barrios for Toronto. How big was that? Seattle, Tampa Bay, the Minnesota Twins at four. Good for them. Rebirth of their whole program. And the San Diego Padres at five. So... Yeah, hey, ERA's not everything, but we are talking a significant gap. You know, Toronto at number one is a 378, 135 innings. The New York Yankees, 763, a 451. So a lot more innings at a better result. Uh, we got those wrong, BBD. It happens. And that's what comes with the territory. You know, we don't usually go. Kind of five for five wrong, but we got those wrong. Yankees disaster class. Everyone gone all year. Mets disaster class into trading half their guys. Mm -hmm. Dodgers an injury class. Braves the only kind of weak spot on their team where they had a lot of injuries and guys coming in and out. And then Houston, I mean, they're going to be around a top 10 rotation, but... Uh, yeah. a guy, a guy you might hear in a second, Christian Javier. Um, not the follow-up season he was looking for, and this one isn't on us. Have you seen Hunter Brown stats lately? Uh, I haven't looked in of late. So Christian Javier, who was one of the breakout players of last year, two five four ERA in twenty five starts. Mm-hmm. He has a four seven four. My guy Hunter Brown, who was like dominant, and everyone was like, "Oh, next New Verlander." Verlander. Twenty-eight starts, a four-eight-seven. Yeah, 
Get you some Hunter Brown splits. Shake it up, baby, for me. So, oh. yeah, what happened to Hunter Brown? Lefties and righties, home and away. Second half, guys are hitting with an 858 OPS against them. 609 ERA. It had a 3-6 at the end of June. And a 6-5-4 ERA since the start of July. Yeesh. Tough to be a big leaguer. Uh, had one two inning scoreless adding out of the pen. Playoffs. Five shut against Oakland. I mentioned Christian Javier. Mm-hmm. And one of the ones I dug up. We did an episode in March. Top five young and future pitchers. Uh, I thought that there had kind of been a graduation of, you know, the Flaherty's Giolito freed. A couple other guys kind of were leaving being a young pitcher and almost a veteran pitcher. The top five 26-year-old and under pitchers as I listed them. Number one, Julio Urias. That one backfired on multiple fronts. Not his best on or off field season. Number two and three, I look okay. Shane McClanahan, who was killing it before injury. Mm-hmm. Number three, Spencer Strider, who will be a top five Cy Young vote getter. Mm-hmm. Something like that. We'll take that. We're, we're fine with those. Four and five. Alec Manoa and Christian Javier. I remember sneaking Javier in just because I was... I was almost, and BBD, maybe this is what we need to know as we, as we grow and do this more. Our Yankee bias could have gotten in the way of the Yankees, although tons of injuries, ugly season all around, whatever. Javier felt, felt like a little bit of living in fear of the Astros. I mean, yeah. he had a great year. People thought he... Was he Jolly Cy Young pick this year? He was. Oh, I was high eat on it, him too. Jolly. He, uh, you know, I pulled, I was about to mention him because pulling up our Cy Young draft, yeah. for, you had, you had him there, but I really wanted him. I was going to grab him with the next pick. So both wrong on him. That's Jolly tough. got God on him. That's tough. A few more things to note in that draft. But we'll get there. Yeah. Uh, picking up my, I, the first person I had out of that team was George Kirby, who would have been a winner in there. So, oh yeah, I think him, him and Gilbert we were both just like, yeah, just haven't quite seen enough. I was kind like of a, it. I was kind of a Gilbert over Kirby guy coming into the year. I think Kirby is that guy. Um, and then my next list was Hunter Green, Lodolo, Lazardo, and Detmers, which isn't nobody got burnt there. Yeah, nobody got burnt there. Yeah. Taking taking Green in the Cy Young draft as a throw in. That that yeah. hasn't aged great. Yeah, I was but. trying to. Uh, that was a little Chris Rose in me coming yeah. out. Yeah, that was a little bit of trying to stir the pot and half believing. Uh, but yes, yeah, Zach Gallon going undrafted in the Cy Young draft mm-hmm. is uh, that was a miss by all of us. Yeah, I had I recall I had written him down in hopes that he was a guy who sneaky hasn't gotten any votes yet, and he had, so I've mm. got him out of the front of my mind. But. We all missed. So, uh, with that, Beebs, I asked you, and, you know, was in a little bit of a time crunch. I will say, um, there's some team stuff that's pretty obvious. Uh, outside of my Yankees, which you can point to a lot of things, right before the start of the baseball season, the episode of Wake and Jake I released was, I love the Cardinals. Uh, any Cardinals take. Ended up in the dumpster. Even in May, I, I kind of did a follow-up re-bet the Cardinals. They're going to figure this out. They had like ten a 10-day ten stretch of looking like they were figuring it out. It's like, all right, you just had a bad April. That I've seen good teams have a bad month. It felt like Start it... Start bad. Felt like it could have been happening. It didn't happen. So, uh, with that, we talk a lot. There's a lot of stuff that comes out of the mouth. I'm not afraid. I'm not going to be scared anymore. BBD, what's uh, what's some of the stuff you dug up? 
There's a few I dug up, a lot of it coming from our from our fantasy draft preview episode, which you you noted the timestamps on there are weird. Yeah, and then I looked at it. I didn't put those there. They're like not in the description. Yeah, so I don't know how that happens. There was and like I'm a scared. there was like a bot automation thing that I was yeah, kind that, of so reading tried the transcripts. Its best. So okay, yeah. So I was nervous. Anyway, in that we talked about Trey Turner, who in the past has been like a first round guy, and he's mocked to go second round. And you you noted that yeah, he's coming off for Trey Turner. What's a down year? Yeah. But Still believe in that skill set. He's returning to the East Coast. He's coming to more of a hitter's park. You were pretty high on Trey yeah, Turner coming into the season. I was. Hey, he's probably winning people some fantasy baseball playoff matchups right now, right? 100%. That's been... You've been, like, salvaged from a few of these being, like, bad, bad. Um, Trey Turner's getting close to being, like... His OPS plus right now is one twelve. Yeah, it's, he like if he keeps finishes September very strong, he can be fine. I did like a number we would have been accepted. I did accepted this definitely year. lean into Trey Turner loving the East Coast a little too much because it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Okay. Yeah, hitters park, all that. Yeah. Um, this one is is a little back to our Yankees. Uh, you discuss, you, well, you almost were ahead of it. Said, you know, Rodon is a little bit of a question mark because of health and all that. Um, but then you backed off of it because, well, the stats are not questionable. Mm. He's, uh, he's been excellent when he pitches. Mm. Thought the only concern was availability. And, uh, and when he has pitched this year, we can agree it's, it's not been the Rodon we signed up for. It has not, uh, on some episodes of Talking Yanks, uh, the judge and jury of James O'Brien, you may know him as John Boy, uh, he is throwing out this whole year of Rodon. It's going to end up being, what, 14 starts? 13? Mm. Which isn't nothing. Which isn't nothing. I, I guess from a health perspective, I'd rather have that than not. The performance has been bad that Rodon has really... He has really set himself up for next year, man. The screws are going to be yeah. on him early. I'm willing, and Jimmy is of the same opinion. Like I'm willing to go into spring training and and the off season feeling fine about him, and and you know we'll see when we get there. But like it's going to be important. He has a good April next year. He has a bad April because we'll we'll lose that quick. I won't worry about. I won't spend all off season worrying about him. And let's just call this a lost year. He was hurt. He never got to really start. New team, new division. New... I guess it's a return to an old league, so I won't do NLAL stuff. But that's um, <sighs> we'll have a lot of off season to talk about that. Okay, I can I can deal with those. This one hurts a little bit because it's okay. about a Jake. Um, you had mentioned Jake Cronenworth. As a list of guys that you'd love to bet the over on their RBIs before you give a, a gander, would you? Do you know how many RBIs he has at this point in the season? So is he is he out for the season at this point? Uh that I I am not aware health wise. So but he, I I know he was having a down year regardless. He had an injuries. awful first half. I think he was starting to go a little bit, but then I think he got hurt again. Padres. I would guess like 41 RBI. He's at 48 right now. Uh, yeah, what was he, his over under? That uh, I, I don't have that. I mean, had to be off the top of my head. He he 70s, wasn't 80s. Yeah, he wasn't minimum. gonna be somebody with a crazy high number because yeah. it, it is Jake Cronenworth at the end of the day. I don't think Vegas is like. I mean, last targeting him, but last, we had him batting f like fifth, sixth in a lineup with a bunch of dudes that'll be on base in front of him. Jake Cronenworth, twenty twenty, he's been so good. Twenty twenty one, he had seventy one RBI. Twenty twenty two, he had eighty eight, and yeah, everyone we, thought we were thinking he's going to be the guy that like gets to a hundred RBIs. He, yeah, he felt like the Adam Duvall. Like you're gonna look at the end of the year and you'd be like, wait, how did Cronenworth have hundred plus RBI? That's another yeah, he, team that he was an awful first. Actually, his April 
was worse than what we would have expected from Cronenworth. It looks it looks better now. May June, terrible. That, he'll, uh, he, he'll tell you that. Twenty three games in July with a seven fifty three OPS. Twenty two games in August with a seven fifty two OPS. He's on his way to a to a quality second half. But man, that's uh the Padres didn't get the script for this season, huh? They they did not. Okay, sorry, Jake. Met him, nice guy. So. A win's a win. This next one, a little similar ilk, another guy who's versatile. We talked Jeff, Jeff McNeil. Okay. You, this is sort of a line you said in passing. Interesting. Um, but you said he, Jeff McNeil is a guy you pencil in and he gets two hits a night. His batting average this season is 269 mm-hmm. and not a lot of slug around that. Typically a doubles guy, that's not really there right now either, below average for the season. Is he doing a every other? He might he may be. He may be. Well twenty nineteen and twenty twenty. Oh, every other year. Though he oh. had I think he had back to back goods. I mean twenty twenty one and twenty twenty three are both below where Jeff McNeil should be. Yes. And he won the batting title last <laughs> The year. batting title between... They got rid and of the... And the three years before were... They got rid of the shift. Yeah, I, I remember I was in on... Wow, I wonder... Okay, see, that's news to me. I would have gotten McNeil's stats wrong. Are Mets fans not happy with McNeil? I... You know, we talked pre-show about a, a Brandon Nimmo take that you ended up having right, so I didn't write it down fully. But, uh... Nice. I have I had had the two of them crossed in my brain all year as far as how their seasons are going. I know which guy's which, uh, but I do recall Jolly at one point saying like, "Yeah, and McNeil's just just not having a good year around July ish." So McNeil's season, I'll text that to Jolly. Um, he's he had a really good September, so hopefully and August, so maybe it's uh Jeff McNeil is building. He can salvage his season and maybe build towards next year. But, yeah, that's... um. You have to get pretty yeah. hot these last two weeks to get back to, like, league average. Especially, He's close now, but... Especially all the... I mean, all the talk with shifts. It, it felt like McNeil, DJ, all of those guys were going to hit more. But now that I rethink it, like, those guys kind of already hit. Yeah. They are guys that... that I mean, the reason they were good is like they'll kind of hit it wherever. In fact, we did episodes. Where guys are over there now. talking about how DJ was like unshiftable. So, all right, see yeah. that Jeff McNeil that that is brought to my attention. Yeah, he uh, yeah, wow. thirty nine doubles last year. I mean, a one forty OPS plus last year. Yeah, silver slugger, all star MVP votes. Interesting. Okay, I'll eat that one. Part of. Part of the Mets not getting their script right either. Yeah, this one, uh, again, back to like a fantasy draft situation. Uh, Byron Buxton was slated yeah. to go like pretty late in drafts, and rightfully injuries a concern. We talked about, all right, well, if he's there in that like 15th round, like he was projected, like you should just grab him. Yeah. Because uh, whenever he plays, he's great. That late, you can deal with having to manipulate your IL and all that. And the, the on-field production hasn't been what other years have been for Byron Buxton. Yeah. Uh, you've heard Trev talk about it a couple times now that he's not even sure where they're at with Buxton. Um, I mean, he's in the middle of the extension, right? Or has it even started? Barely. It's it's, started this year. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Five more years of Byron Buxton for Minnesota. And he's kind of like a DH now. Yeah, I know they're like it's not, I remember Trev saying the plan was like this year just take a year away from the field and we'll reevaluate. But of position players are aging's hard. Are him and Stanton the most injury? Oh, available. Like, does that? I don't say injury prone, but kinda. Dude, they're the yeah. I'd, I'd call them the two guys. I'm trying like, to think. You're, who, you're assuming a month away. 
I'm trying to think who else even pops up. Like, it, not counting pitchers. There's a lot of pitchers that yeah. get hurt. Um, Pitcher, pitchers kind of any Bucks, anything Stanton. you're going to miss a month. Um. Feels like we got to be missing one. There's going to be other guys. Let us know in the comments. And uh, and we also certainly didn't catch all the bad takes, so remind us and Trout? watch old stuff. Trout Seeger. Trout at this point. Trout's getting into the conversation, which is scary. Been It's been a few years, Trout. Seeger gets, like, nicked up, but he doesn't get, like, hurt. Yeah, this year he, he missed a, a fairly serious amount of time. Um, yeah, Trout. 36 games in 21, a buck 19 and 22, 82 games this year for Trout. So it's, that's three in a row with a lot of time missed. 53 games in the 60-game season, that that clears. Uh, a buck 34 and 19, so 114 and 17. So one year above 140 games he got in 2018. Man, Go look at Buxton's page if you want to be. I don't know what the word is, but he's played a hundred. He's played a hundred games once. He's been a part of nine seasons. Like, okay, you want to take out his rookie year? Sure. You want to take out twenty twenty? Sure. Seven years he's played a hundred games once. 2020 by like percentage of games he played 39 out of 60 which is still at least one noteworthy absence but kind of kind of played a, a fine percent there I mean Stanton he played 139 and 21 110 and 22 even 96 this year that's that would be Buxton's second most games played so that's uh that's crazy and sad it's crazy and sad. And yeah, I'm um this was my last shot on Buxton. I kind of thought he was going to take care of the body a little more like it's full blown, dude. You get banged up, you've got the contract like um that guy, I just don't know. Maybe it's just the worst luck in the world. But yeah, I'm uh this is horribly rude, but I'm I'm going to angels him. Um hmm. not going to believe in Byron Buxton until he gives me another full one. Sad. And we'll be pleasantly surprised. We'd love it. Rooting for him. Like him. Like the twins. Uh, I grabbed two more. One of them Yankees related. Okay. And we'll start there. Just in general, you're pretty high on DJ LeMay coming into the yeah. season. And he, all reasons I agree with, which overall, even with a, the big second half he's had, is wrong. His first yeah. half was dreadful. Yeah. It's uh, he's him and McNeil. Similar OPS pluses, both having better second halves. Bring it next year, both of you guys. Damn Yankees! You got one more. I have one more. We we reacted to the reactions to some TPPs. Okay. Uh, if you remember, the Cubs were kind of the first. Mm. It, it, they were the like kind of entering a new tier, but they were between. I think they were between Diamondbacks and Red Sox, something like that. Yes. Um, they were they were pretty low, and that's a fan vote. That part's not on us. But then we were talking about the crowd reaction to it, and you said, uh. You know, just put the Cubs roster on paper next to the Brewers and especially the Cardinals, and it's just a different tier. And a little bit coupled with that, as you said, and especially the Brewers, I don't feel amazing about this year. Well, and on all three ends, we kind of we kind of missed that. My Brew Crew, at least a little bit. Um. Yes, I, the Cubs felt a little hodgepodgey. I underestimated Justin Steele, but I think everyone did. It wasn't in my book before the season. <clears throat> Justin Steele very much seemed like the young pitcher that had a nice year and snuck up on everyone, and then the league would bounce back. At least in my head and in my feel, I was wrong. Uh, Justin Steele's awesome. Um, he has made... 
a fan out of me. Staff in general has been top 10 ERA. And the, the team itself has clicked. I mean, if this happened, if we were doing this 10 games before the All-Star break, I still would have had better ground to stand on. And they still have to make the dance. Like, they have not... They have not completed this. It has them as a 52% chance to make the playoffs. I so it was higher a couple weeks ago. I believe in baseball, and I thought the Cubs had a chance to have a fun summer. I, didn't, I did not believe in their roster. Um, and my goodness, man, I, I feel like we spent the first half of the season talking about it. Or at least when we talked about disappointing teams. The second half of the season has kind of been Yankees, some Mets here and there, the Padres especially as they they limp in, although they're playing great right now. The Cardinals, what? 67 and 84, last place. Behind the Pirates, behind the Reds, behind the Cubs, behind the Brewers. That one. I feel like we haven't talked about the Cardinals in two months. They've given us nothing to talk about. They sold their guys. Thanks for thanks for that. Got a got a couple pieces of fodder, but they it's crazy what their season is. Goldie and Arenado ended up being okay. Even Wilson Contreras. Remember his whole catching debacle though? Um Yeah. Tommy Edmund, it's a step back, but not like dreadful, dreadful. Yeah, kind of bad. Man, the St. Louis Cardinals. Okay, okay. I think, you know, mixed in there, you could always, you know, I think we'll follow up on our over-under TPP episode, and there's obvious misses that, you know, Cardinals, Yankees. Mm -hmm. I was kind of in on the Guardians. They let me down. I mean, picking over-unders, if you pick at a 50% clip, that's pretty good. So we'll circle back on those talking baseball-wise. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, I guess as I was lining up today's episode, A, being honest with you guys, supposed to do it with Foolish today, calendar's wrong, bong, next episode. Um, and then yeah, I was, you know I love the save your season up for a batter or pitcher to finish strong down the finish line, we're almost past that, a week and a half left, like it's, it's kind of decided and that's what landed me on the topic of, all right. Let's dig up a little bit of the bat. Um, and there's going to be a lot of that every year. So, thank you, BBD. Thank you. Let's get into some football. But first, did you know playoff baseball is on the way? You knew that. That's part of the reason you're here. And at DraftKings, with the playoff baseball action, they are giving you $200 instantly in bonus bets. If you bet $5 on baseball, God. Use those bonus bets. Take a couple chances. One of those hits. Rack up a nice little bankroll. So what are you waiting for? Download the DraftKings Sports we have now and use code BAKERS. New customers can score $200 instantly in bonus bets for betting just $5 on baseball. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code BAKERS. The crown is yours. Gambling Crumb, call 1-800-GAMBLER, visit www.1800gambler.net in New York, call 8778-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in Connecticut. Help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, licensee partner Golden Nugget Lake Charles, 21 plus, ages vary by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario, see dkng.co slash baseball for eligibility, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Crushed. Football. I wanted to reformat uh, my football a little bit, and maybe it becomes an easier graphic for some of our socials, but I thought I'd do the three games to watch. Okay. Uh, My favorite favorite. My favorite dog. And an over-under I like. So there's a little gambling spin in there. Um, And I think I'm going to give the one game to not watch. Because I think mm-hmm. I think the NFL has a strong. We kind of ignore it because it always brings good action. But man, there's one or two games every week. It's it's rare when there's not like <laughs> two that we're just not interested in. And I I'm, I'm interested to see. I hope I'm wrong. Teams make sense. I hope I'm wrong on some of those games. Um, 
because I, I do have one that I think people would assume the opposite. So, the three games I'm excited to watch this weekend. Uh, at number three, I think people might have even had this in the uh, don't watch this game category, but I'm fascinated. The Jets are hosting the Patriots. The Jets are one and one. Remember, they they win against the Bills. Who reminder, like, Bills are really good. Or, excuse me, Bills are good. You're going to hear more about them in a second. The Bills are good. They beat them at home. It's 9-11. It's the Rodgers game. Pure chaos, overtime, punt return, all that jazz. They end up getting rolled on on the Cowboys. Zach Wilson's first true start. I'm high on the Cowboys. Um, I'm not writing off the Jets yet because I think I think they have a chance to stay around this thing with how good their defense is. So the appeal here is the Jets are one and one. They win. They go to two and one on a Jets season. <laughs> Every Jets fan in the history of Jets fans will take a two and one start, even if that means losing uh, the quarterback that was supposed to change everything. The New England Patriots are 0-2. They lost both games at home. Now, they lost to two teams that I think are probably two of the top five teams minimum right now, depending how you rank them with the Eagles and the Dolphins. They end up being close, technically one-score games, although they didn't really feel like that. But there is the home part of this. So you kind of have to juggle the, okay, so this is at home. These games end up being closer than you'd probably think to two good teams. Uh, we know that Bill still has some tricks up his sleeve. We saw the blocked field goal. Uh, some people liked Mac Jones last game. I did not. Um, so in the Meadowlands, and New England has tortured the Jets throughout the year. We are going to find out a lot about one of these teams. I think if the Jets lose, the dream's over. It's done. Like, obviously, obviously the goalposts have already moved for Jets fans with losing Rodgers. But if they win, 2-1, and one, okay. We've won both our home games. We've got a defense. Let's figure this out. If they lose, they're 1-2. and two, And who do they play the next weekend? The Kansas City Chiefs. If the Patriots go 0-3, I mean, there's just statistics on this. The NFL teams don't do that. And the Patriots roster does not feel good. Like, there's no part of the Patriots roster. Their defense, I know, can be strong, and that's Belichick's specialty, sh- shutting off your favorite thing. As like a, as like a unit, it's, it's fine. It's a solid. Yeah. If this defense was with a good offensive unit, we'd say, like, wow. Good team, but they're with an offensive unit that nobody believes in. That it doesn't feel like one of those elite defensive units that can change games for their offense. I think the Jets have that. I don't think the Patriots do. If they lose at the Jets, road game, first road game for the Pats this year, their next game is on the road at the Cowboys. You'd be looking at an 0-4 Patriots team. Mac Jones, Belichick at this point, I don't know. I just don't know what that means. So that's why that is the number three game I am excited to look into this weekend. The number two game I am excited to watch this weekend. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I am excited to watch, where did I, I just said, oh, Monday night. The Bengals host the Rams. Some similar moving parts here. Um, We may not be seeing Joe Burrow, which would change the whole equation there. He's got a calf thing going on. But the Cincinnati Bengals, the the team that people feel good about against the Chiefs, they are 0-2. I know I gave this speech about early season, and it you know, we've seen them do this before. They're at home against the Rams. The Rams have been feisty. Puka Nakua season. He can't be stopped. McVay is a mastermind. Matthew Stafford looks good. These Rams gave the Niners a good fight. 
At home, 30 to 23, 30 to 20 field goal at the buzzer just to change the odds. They beat Seattle big in Seattle. Seattle goes out the next week. Seattle had a fine season last year. They go out the next week and they beat the Lions. The Bengals, if Joe Burrow's playing injured, interested in that either way. If Joe Burrow's not playing, the Bengals trying to survive to not go 0-3 themselves, the Cincinnati Bengals, in a division that at the start of this season, legitimately every team can win. The Browns, I'm not the biggest fan of them. You're going to hear about them in a second. The Browns can still win that division. Baltimore's 2-0. Lamar's got the most talent he's had. Pittsburgh is Pittsburgh. They find a way, as they did last week. If the Bengals drop to 0-3, Burrow's banged up. And I think it would be the Rams kind of reannouncing themselves to the NFC. Remember all that conversation in the NFC about who's the best quarterback? Like, how far does Matthew Stafford climb if he's healthy and good? And Puka Nakua, if he's, like, real? What about when they add Cooper Cup? I think week five he's eligible. So, like, the Rams could become players and the Bengals could be looking on the outside, from the outside in, from the outside out. What was I about to say? On the outside looking in. I don't, does that even make sense? It does, I think. It does. It's where they are. The third game that I'm excited to watch this weekend, and this is where the NFL just wins in the best way. It's two 0-2 teams. The Chargers are playing the Vikings. The Chargers lost the two most Chargers games possible. The Dolphins, who I'm extremely high on, you know, they had them on the ropes at home. They end up losing by two late. Titans on the road. They end up losing in overtime on a field goal. The two, at one point, their win probability in the second game was 83%. That feels pretty good. At one point, their win probability in the Dolphins game was, did we get to 90? No, we got to 78%. So, in each game... Late in the game, it felt the Chargers had an 80% chance to win. They lost both of their games. They head to the Minnesota Vikings. The Minnesota Vikings coming off their awesome season. People were skeptical. People are starting to drink tears a little bit. They lose at home to the Bucks. We still don't really know what to do with that. Uh, first week, Tampa is 2-0. and Maybe they've got... A little more sauce than everyone would have expected before the season. And then they lose at the Eagles. Kirk ends up racking up stats late. Eagles were in control. It's at the Eagles, and it could look a lot worse than that. They host the Chargers. I think the Chargers are the better football team, but it's in Minnesota. I think they're going to start leaning into their passing attack even more. Uh, Jordan Addison, the first-round pick everyone was high on, started flying up fantasy football boards. He's been good. Justin Jefferson is still Justin Jefferson. He hasn't been racking up the tutties, uh, but that could happen this week. This has all the makings of a modern-day NFL shootout. It has all the makings of late drama. It has all the makings of a game one on the final play. And it has two teams that seem to lose games in tragic fashion. Ergo, the drama of the NFL, one of those teams, Chargers or the Vikings, will be 0-3. Those are the three games I think you should watch this week. The one game you shouldn't, which I think will be a quick segment because I don't want to put teams down. Titans-Browns. Um... Deshaun Watson, I guess pun intended, I, I make jokes. He rubbed me the wrong way so bad. <laughs> I, that, it's a genuine phrase. Deshaun, watching him play that Steelers game was awful. Was awful. 
the two offensive face masks from the quarterback, each looking like intentional, each looking like he it was malicious and he could get away with it because I'm the quarterback, those were both crazy plays. Um, it feels like his football instincts are completely off. And maybe as we get more into this season, there will be a development of that. Was talking about it with Panic and BBD the other day. The way he plays football is so unappealing to me right now. Um, it feels like when there's plays where I think Deshaun should tuck it and run, it feels like he tries to force an awkward pass. Uh, when there's passes to be made or time in the pocket, it seems like he gets panicky in the pocket. Deshaun Watson has kind of been become my number one quarterback I do not like watching. Um, and this is in Cleveland against the Tennessee Titans, who I think their offensive formula, they played... <laughs> They played a 16-15 to 15 game against the Saints week one. Uh, again, they beat the Chargers in OT, a Chargers team that likes to find ways to lose. I think that Browns game is going to be very similar to the 16-15 to 15 game. No Nick Chubb in that game. That's a good reason to watch Browns football. Um, I will be avoiding that game. So, with that, Three games to watch, one game to not. My three bets I like this week. My favorite favorite, my favorite dog, and an over-under I liked. I'll do my favorite dog, Noodle, the Noodle segment. How about that? (laughs) This week's Noodle. This week's Noodle is the Washington Commanders. Uh, Commander Hive, raise up. And maybe I'll have a reason to be mad at you guys in a couple days. The Buffalo Bills are six and a half point favorites going to Washington. Uh, The Commanders are 2-0. They survived the Cardinals. They come back against the Broncos in mile high. Now, maybe I'm going to walk all over myself here because... I don't think the Broncos have the sauce this year. But it's in mile high. They came back from 18 points down, which means they believe. Uh, And they've got a new quarterback at the helm, Howell. The Howell Hive came at me this weekend. Well, I'm getting on the bus. Let's find out. Six and a half just feels like a lot of points at home. And I still feel like Buffalo... I feel like a lot of the AFC has caught up to Buffalo. Uh, I told you guys I like the Dolphins more than them. Uh, Obviously, the Chiefs still on them. Jacksonville's an interesting conversation, I suppose. Jacksonville is, yeah. Um, Commanders at home, a 2-0 Commanders team that believes that crowd will be rowdy in D.C. I think they got something going on down there, and I think the Bills are trending in the wrong direction. Uh, I think I like Washington better head coach-wise. A lot of things I like there. Six and a half points at home. We'll take that. Uh, My favorite favorite. See, this is what I was talking about before. I'm going to go with the Miami Dolphins. Uh, They are hosting my Denver Broncos. I gave you a couple speeches on here. I gave a lot of people this speech, and now I feel really embarrassed. I really thought the Broncos were going to open up 2-0. I thought they were going to beat up on the Raiders, feel good, Sean Payton era, era, bull in a china shop, win that game, whether it's ugly or pretty. And then the Commanders at home, coming off week one, building off something. They are 0-2. They lose again in tragic fashion. Who knows how people are feeling about Russ? Who knows how people are feeling about Payton? Maybe the two old dogs come in surprise. Um, At Miami, West Coast team, or kind of West Coast team, mountain team, heading east, one o'clock game. There's an NFL history with that. I like the Dolphins. The line I saw at DraftKings was minus six. That felt a little low for me. 
Um, the Dolphins have one of, if not the most right now, high-powered offense in the NFL. The Broncos are scrapping for points and couldn't put a team away last week. Awful formula. Uh, Dolphins won last week uh, without some of their best players on defense. I think they're getting one or two of them back. Give me the Dolphins, uh, a team I think I'm higher on than most of the Dolphins, although a lot of people are coming on, and I am uh, I am down on my Broncos. So uh, that's my favorite, favorite. Over, under, the Thursday night game, BBD's G-Men. Versus the San Francisco 49ers. The Thursday games have, I think they still have an incredible under rate. Uh, football players and football teams are such creatures of habit, and they watch so much tape during the week, and they practice to play these teams that we've seen a lot of these teams show up on Thursday, and they're just kind of bumping into each other uh, for most of the game. We have a case of, I think, one of the best teams in the league versus one of the we're not sure about teams, at least. They're without their best offensive weapon in Saquon. Maybe. Should be. He's not been great at playing through injuries. They are. That was... That's that's a smoke screen. That's as much smoke screen as you can smoke. Um, I think it's going to be ugly. I do think the Niners will win handily. Uh, The G-Men, I don't know. I don't know how many points they're going to be able to get up on a Thursday night football game without their star running back. Matt Breida gets some carries. Unfortunately, I've had to pick him up in a couple fantasy Mm. leagues, and I don't feel good about it. Basically hoping for one of those... Eight carries, 35 yards, and a touchdown stat lines. Catch one long one and uh, maybe a screen or two in your PPR league and, and bust through and you have a nice day. And, yeah, I mean, I, I think if you're the Niners, like, there's nothing about this game that says, like, you know, let's, let's blow them up and let's put up 40 ourselves. Like, I think this is going to be a Thursday night football. Giants tr- try to giant it up and keep it ugly and keep them close. If Niners go up 14-3, to I don't think the Giants are going to be able to pass their way back into it. I don't think the Niners are going to be trying to... I think they're going to try to run out the clock to get the extra off days going into the next week. I'm, I'm struck by... I, I didn't know this was coming. Separately, Dalton, uh, Lucas, and I were talking about this game out there and this over-under line. Uh, the Giants won. Their games kind of struggled to get to overs... Pretty regularly right. when they have a full plan. This week they kind of don't. Right. Bad sign for offense. And like if the game is going to be close, because the Thursday game, some funk just happens. Sure. Uh, I don't think it's going to be because they kept up scoring. Mm. But mm. with, and you know, sometimes that makes you think, all right, so they're scoring 60. Well, that's, uh, you never know with football. That's the beauty of it. You never know with sports. That's why we watch. Um, but yeah, I Gotta mean, play the game. Last, last night we let the liquor talk. Um, last week's Thursday game, Philly and Minnesota. They did rack up the points, so can't put that. The first game to start the season was Detroit, Kansas City, which stayed under what two high-powered offenses. Um, I don't know. Everyone has their Thursday theories. Uh, I just think there's a, if the Giants end up with 10 points or less, is anyone shocked? No. Like against kind of any team, I don't like pick the Giants. If the Giants have like 17 24. or more, I think that's almost more of a surprise than if they have 10 points or less against the Niners in San Francisco on a short week. So now you're looking for 30 Niners points. It could happen. But that's the great game. It game could game. happen. Uh, hey, comment section, why don't you let us know if there's more football stuff you're looking for? I know we're still adapting to that world, uh, and we're hitting on a lot of fronts. Jam football, Daltonian. Uh, so let us know here. Otherwise, enjoy your weekend, and we'll see you guys on Monday. Might be foolish time.